Good morning dear brothers and sisters, today we will see the book of 1 Kings chapters 11 and 12. In the sacred annals of the book of 1 Kings, chapter 11 unfolds a critical juncture in the life and reign of Solomon, the king bestowed with unparalleled wisdom and opulence. As Solomon's reign ripened, his heart began to stray from the righteous path, ensnared by foreign allurements. The chapter commences by illustrating Solomon's ill-fated entanglements through marriage with princesses from foreign lands, a transgression against God's divine directives. These unions, more than mere political alliances, had pernicious consequences. The foreign wives, hailing from nations steeped in idolatry, began to sway Solomon's heart, leading him away from the exclusive worship of Yahweh. In time, Solomon's faith in the God of Israel wavered, he commenced constructing high places for the worship of these foreign deities, a grievous departure from the teachings of his father David and the laws of God. One particularly abhorrent act was the construction of an altar to Molech, the detestable idol of the Ammonites, in the vicinity of Jerusalem. Such actions, idolatry, and apostasy deeply grieved the Lord, for he had explicitly warned Solomon against turning away from the true path. God's wrath was kindled against Solomon, and in response to this apostasy, he pronounced judgment. The kingdom, once united under David and Solomon, would be torn asunder during the reign of Solomon's son. This division, however, was not to be witnessed in Solomon's lifetime. It was a testament to God's faithfulness to his covenant with David, a covenant that granted Solomon a prosperous reign yet remained conditional upon faithfulness and obedience challenges arose during Solomon's later years. Adversaries like Hadad the Edomite and Reason, the son of Eliada, rebelled against Solomon's dominion. Hadad, who had fled to Egypt as a child during David's reign, returned and began to sow discord. Reason, seizing the moment, established his reign in Damascus, posing a significant threat to Solomon's kingdom. Thus, Solomon's reign, though once marked by wisdom, prosperity, and the splendor of the temple, faced a tumultuous decline. His later years were marred by a weakening faith, idolatry, and the resultant challenges that loomed over the once united kingdom of Israel. In the annals of the book of 1 Kings, chapter 12 unveils a crucial turning point in the history of the kingdom of Israel following the reign of Solomon, as his son Rehoboam ascends to the throne. As Solomon breathed his last and was laid to rest with his ancestors, Rehoboam, his son, stepped into the mantle of kingship. The land was laden with expectation and hope, for Rehoboam was to continue the legacy of his illustrious father. However, the people of Israel were burdened and disheartened by the oppressive labor and heavy yoke placed upon them during Solomon's reign. In their quest for respite and a more equitable dispensation, they approached Rehoboam, beseeching him to lighten the load his father had imposed. They sought compassion and understanding, hoping for a compassionate response from the new king. Rehoboam, faced with this appeal, sought counsel to navigate this delicate matter. He conferred with the seasoned elders who had served his father Solomon. These wise elders advised moderation, suggesting that Rehoboam extend clemency to the people, soothing their grievances and lightening their burdens. They urged him to be a king of the people, winning their hearts through understanding and benevolence. On the contrary, Rehoboam also consulted the young advisors who had grown up with him. These advisors, inexperienced and perhaps influenced by a sense of entitlement and pride, offered a starkly different perspective. They counseled Rehoboam to assert his authority and dominion, display a firm hand, and intensify the rigor of his father's reign. Their counsel was to tighten the reins, increasing the burdens on the people, and making it evident that the new king was no less formidable than his predecessor. In a moment of fateful decision-making, Rehoboam chose the latter course. Rejecting the prudent advice of the elders, he embraced the counsel of the younger, more impetuous advisers. Addressing the people, he conveyed a stern and uncompromising message, refusing to lighten their burdens. His words were harsh laden with a sense of royal superiority, and devoid of empathy. The consequences of this decision were immediate and seismic. 
The people of Israel, feeling the weight of his words, rebelled against the house of David. In a swift and decisive action, they declared their independence from the rule of the Davidic dynasty. The once united kingdom of Israel was now fractured, divided into two distinct entities, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. This division fulfilled the divine prophecy and design, as communicated earlier through the prophet Ahijah. It was a moment of profound historical significance, altering the trajectory of the people of Israel and setting the stage for a tumultuous era marked by division and discord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we reflect upon the narratives of 1 Kings chapters 11 and 12, we humbly come before you in prayer. We acknowledge the lessons embedded within these chapters, the frailty of human faith, and the consequences of our choices. Help us, Lord, to remain steadfast in our devotion to you, seeking wisdom and discernment in all aspects of our lives. In chapter 11, we see the subtle erosion of faith, a reminder of the need for constant vigilance in our walk with you. Grant us the strength to resist influences that lead us away from your truth, and help us to uphold your commandments with unwavering conviction. In chapter 12, we witness the repercussions of pride and hasty decisions. Teach us to seek counsel from the wise and to be patient in our judgments, so that we may always act in a manner that reflects your love and compassion. May these narratives serve as a beacon, guiding us toward a deeper relationship with you, marked by obedience, humility, and wisdom. Lead us, O Lord, in the paths of righteousness, and let our hearts remain attuned to your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, we will continue with the next chapters of 1 Kings in the next video. Thank you, God bless you.